Hi everyone. The objective of uh, this short clip is to introduce the course machine learning given as part of the Academy City. Several special things about Academy City that distinguish it from any other platform, generally speaking, in the way we present the information, the tools we give the instructor, and the tools we give to the user. Beside the fact that we support several languages, collaboration, using simulations. In this clip, I will focus mostly on what's special for machine learning. So let's start. Uh, we're going to the courses after we log in, and we have a list of courses as we offer in different topics. We are dealing in data science, and we have the course machine learning. I strongly recommend if you are not familiar with the programming language, uh, generally speaking, or in Python, I strongly recommend you take the, at least the introductory level in our course framework for software engineering. You are as a machine learning person, okay? You're developing models, you're using models, you're processing data, you're choosing the right model to estimate stuff, to bring added value to your business, but eventually it has to end up in the production environment. The whole process, it's really part of framework of software engineering. You should familiarize yourself with those concepts to know how a software is really built, not only just to know how to perform machine learning tasks. Having said that, let's just jump to machine learning, of course. And here it doesn't seem special, but let's just demonstrate first something unique that has to do with all our other courses. So if I go into the first chapter, I logged in as an administrator and I am as an instructor, I can modify any part of the presentation right online. What does that mean? That means that I can go, as I speak now, and or in my session and I want to add something or I just want to change something or at home I work with my colleague to build up this course. I double click and I can modify everything in here. And every modification after I save it, I can publish it to my students. The structure of the page is made of many pieces. So if I go into edit and I will just look at the structure of the page, it made of many pieces. So for example, when I edit this page, okay, my colleague and I can modify whatever, my colleague can work at the same time on another slice and we don't overwrite each other. That is a true content management system and that's what we have here, okay? That's a side comment. Now let's go back to our, what's special about machine learning in this structure? The most important thing is, as you start a course and you pass the first session of introductions, special about taking this course with us is that immediately after the first session, you download the whole framework, which include all the programming you need for the course. So you will be downloading Python, you will be downloading PyCharm, install it on your machine, and then you download the whole code. And in addition, in the code you make sure you have also Django and all the libraries in Python you will need for the course. So you end up with PyCharm on your computer. Since it is a real web application, okay, or more correctly to say, it is a real web, a web uh, project, it's built up of many applications. One of the first application is the core in which we organize all the important code that we use over and over. One of which is a special component we made in Python, which you can use for all your machine learning tasks. We'll focus on that object before we start diving into the book and into the material. Why is it very important to understand that object? Because many tasks, starting from data processing up to model selection, model training, and then deployment, okay, they are repetitive tasks. 
and all those tests are well organized in one object that you will use all along the whole course. So chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, you use the same object, you inherit from it, you learn what inheritance mean, and then you just modify it for a specific uh, chapter. So for example, in chapter two, we will be inheriting from that and we just do some modification that we will learn in the course. What's the advantage of using this framework? Since it's a real web project, we have all the code organized by chapters. So all the code for chapter one, it's organized right here. And let's run the server and see what I mean by that. I really opening a web site and the website, you have all the stuff you need. In fact, this is a real web design, as you can see in many application. You can upload it as it is to Amazon Web Services, it will run perfectly, okay? Now, when I get into here, it's organized by chapters, and all those chapters really inheriting from the same object. But what the nice part, let's take as an example, chapter one. Okay, and I'm getting the data for chapter one, plotting here, if I have here, plot, plot. Okay, how is that plot have been created? Okay, you have the whole process from getting the data up to presenting it online. And the code is given to you in a well-organized manner way. You have chapter one, and under chapter one, you can see this is really the code for getting the data and presenting that simple chart. That's really very useful and very instructive. You can see how for you now, since we, you didn't go through the course yet, but this is really the basic object and it does a lot of work. That's why we created it. And that's the way professional people work in real life. Okay, the second things we can, I can show another example. For example, this is a code of trying to find what it will be the best linear model. And then we try, or you will see how we do it. And then we uh, 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 comment on some uh, uh, criticism about the model, what might go wrong, and how we should be very careful in the way we sample or choosing that model. Later on in chapter three, we dive into more advanced issues on how to choose the right model, which are the models available how to implement using different models and how to pick up the best one, okay? All that process we, should, we have very nicely outlined in chapter one, we implement it for the housing prices in California in chapter two, and in chapter three, we're using it for another type of a projects, which is classification. And here we try to estimate, to get the data, and we'll explain what data what those data are. We're getting the data and we explain the structure of the data, of course, in the course, how we're converting the data, okay? You can see here, in fact, you see the number five and we'll explain what the meaning of image in this course. How do I identify handwritten uh, numbers? And that's just as an example of how to use machine learning, one of the very interesting test to do and how you can apply all the stuff that you learn in this course to other type of tasks and upload it in a production environment. I hope to see you and good luck.